So this is the front showing kids having fun planting trees in a very idyllic situation with animals all around them. And in the back, there are wind turbines, perfectly integrated in the environment. When I asked my daughters, what are those? They said, beautiful flowers. So the first message is that wind power of all energy sources happens to be the beautiful one from the aesthetic point of view. And it will be an integral part of uh, our environment in terms of energy sources. We have in the United States the so-called Saudi Arabia of wind. These maps shows uh, locations with, with wind measurements and the color is such that the darker the dot, the more the wind. And the central belt obviously sticks out as a very windy location. I have some numbers for you uh, about the total potential over land uh, being above 2,000 gigawatts of potential over land right now. The offshore resource, depending on depth, is at least 100 gigawatts. And even just the mid-Atlantic coast alone has up to 330 gigawatts of potential from offshore, a huge amount of energy. So the question about wind power is not really how much do we have, how much can we count on it, but mostly how much do we want. This is a plot that shows how fast wind power has been growing in the last years in the US. And uh, whereas it grew about 40% from 2006 to 2007, it, it actually jumped up 50% in this country in one year. That means that the number of turbines installed from 2007 to 2008 went up by 50%. A very positive uh, growth for this industry. And California used to be the leader in, in terms of insta installed uh, capacity. Now Texas is number one, California number two, and Iowa number three. There are a variety of new technologies in wind power, uh, not all of which you might be familiar with. In the lower left corner, uh, to give you a perspective, this is a blade of a new generation ground-based turbine. It's 60 meters long. That truck is a gigantic, it's, it's, it's as long as a train just to carry the blade. The longer the, bla the blade, the more the area swept by the blades, the more the energy. Turbines are that scale right now. On the left, you can see an uh, innovative design for uh, small wind. You have floating technology for offshore in the center, and to the right side, to the right hand side, are the high altitude wind power, some proposed technologies. Sky wind power uh, to the right with these rotors floating in the air. There's a tether that connects the rotors to the ground to deliver electricity, um, and there's Magin is another technology. In this plot, I'm trying to convey again the message that it's not really about, about how much wind do we have, but how much do we want? Do you want 10% of the electricity supply or the electricity demand in the US? Well, I have put a wind farm at the windiest site, sites in the US. There's actually a, a pink square at the windiest sites, enough of them to cover 10% of the electricity demand. And chances are you cannot see them because <laughs> that's the point. Uh, to, it, it, it doesn't take that much land to supply 10% of the electricity. But if you put them all together, they sum up to that square in the right, uh, lower right corner. It's an area of about 22,000 uh, square kilometer. The area of Texas is about 700,000. You want more? You want 20%? That's what it looks like. Now the area obviously has expanded. You probably still cannot see the dots, the individual dots, but we can really play this game, 50%. Now perhaps you can start seeing some of the individual squares. In the Bay Area, for example, it, it would be pretty much the area of the peninsula covered with wind farms. And you can even get to 100% if, if so you wish. And now the area that you need is about the size of a third of Texas. In terms of number of turbines needed, it's about a million point three of wind turbines. So I did some calculations last night and assuming a growth rate of 40%, we cannot actually make those uh, by 2020, but by 2021 should be possible. 